Hey, welcome back again. This is the Clay Golem. Uh, they're coming fast and furious at the moment as we've got a number of uh, little videos and add-ons and things we want to look at. In this video though we're not looking at an add-on uh, and we are not building any particular content. What we do want to do is look at the group function that has been updated as part of the latest uh, game engine update. So that's for the Dungeons and Dragons gaming engine update which is now version 3. Uh, so the thing we have with Foundry is we get updates to Foundry itself, we get updates to the game engine, and then we have add-ons on top of that. So this is kind of sits in that middle layer, if you like. And we started off in the last sort of uh, main video, and um, we had a little look at setting up a group for our characters, and we created Haley's Heroes. Uh, but for those of you who have not seen that video, obviously you can go back and watch it. It was only a bit at the end we did it. Um, but uh, I'll quickly run through that now, just so that you can see how that was done. So we're on our actor screen at the top right here and we can create actors and we can call this whatever we want. Uh, so let's call this one just so that we're not uh, duplicating. We call this Haley's Losers uh, just for a difference. Now we're not going to create a player character here. This is going to be a group for our player characters. So we can click on here and select group. Uh, and if we want to, we can put it in a particular folder. I'm not going to. I'm just going to create that. And it automatically brings up, just like it does with creating any actor, except we're creating a group of actors, uh, it brings up our, um, our thing here. Now, what we can do here is a number of things. We can change our, um, our portrait for this group if we want to, um, and we can change another few things. You can see there's a description, inventory, and members, because this is a group. So to create a player character group, what we want to do is just literally drag our characters our actors into here and straight away it's creating that group for us just going to put these three in so what this means is this group is um, because they are grouped together we can distribute things like experience and gold and treasure to the group rather than having to do it individually and this is what i want to look at in this video because it's just really handy okay so um we can look at inventory so in here we can see at the top here there's gold uh, your silver and everything else so you've got all your coinage in here that belongs to the party or the group rather than an individual so they've got their individual wealth but they might be walking around with a, a chest full of loot to split up later you can give it to the party and you might do that with other weapons equipment and th things like that as well and loot you might dump it all in here uh, so what we need to be make sure is that we're on our party here. So not just a group, but it is a party. So it knows that this is a player character group. Um, we're not going to bother updating the icon here. But we can just close that. Uh, and on the left-hand side, if we close our players, we can see we've got these two groups. Double-click, there's Haley's Heroes uh, and Haley's Losers uh, with its members in there. It's different. Okay, so that's nice and easy, nice and straightforward, um, but we can do the same with our monsters as well. So if we, for example, uh, if we went to the Clifftop Observatory on here, and let's say we wanted to put all of these Sturges, because in theory that's going to be one battle where the player characters might fight the Kobolds as well, but... The, the way the adventure is written, the idea is, is that player characters effectively come to the rescue of them. So let's create a group for those monsters. So I'm going to create a new actor and I'm going to, uh, I can call this whatever I want, of course. Let's call it Sturges. It's not a player character. It's a group. I'm not going to put this in a folder at the moment and create that. So exactly the same as we did for... Um, our player characters. Now I can absolutely update our um, our icon if I want to and bring in something else. Uh, so let's go to our um, go into Stormwreck, we can go into Monsters and we can find uh, our picture of a Sturge. For example, we don't have to do that. We really really don't have to do that but we're going to do it just to show that you can and um, we can bring this one over, get rid of those couple of backgrounds um, and see if we can shrink this a little bit bit more central apply so there we go so this is our Sturges group and they've got their own icon whatever that might be um, and um, okay so what we need to do is make sure this isn't set as party it's not a party it's an encounter 
So we can just switch that from that little drop down here. And you can see at the moment the members is empty. So if we go to our monsters, we can drag over all of the monsters that are in this combat. Now, this is for these Sturges. How many was there? There's eight Sturges here. So we only need to drag the Sturge in once. Uh, and we can just update that to say there's eight of them. Now, what this does give us is it tells us automatically it's calculated the experience points that this encounter is worth. So if I uh, chuck a ghoul in here as well, that just went from 200 to 400 because obviously that ghoul is a lot higher. And that's calculating off of the challenge rating here. Um, so a quarter, uh, sorry, an eighth each for the Sturges, and there happens to be eight of them. Um, and a CR1 creature, the Ghoul, 200 XP. So all it's doing is saying, well, eight of those is 200 XP, eight of the, uh, one of those is 200 XP, which gives a total of 400. Uh, and we can add as many things as we want into this encounter, and it will just keep doing that. Now, the idea being is as this is a group, let's take these two out, so we've got this as a complete group, um, we might give them an inventory. So let's say, for example, these Sturges happen to have 150 gold. It's quite a ridiculous amount for Sturges to have, but we're doing this just as a test. Uh, so they have got 150 gold. We can put that in there. Easy peasy. We've got experience points and we've got gold. So we can close that particular lot. Let's close our monsters. Uh, and on the right hand side, we can see now we've got Haley's heroes, Haley's losers and our Sturges encounter. So I'd probably count, uh, create a new folder for encounters for this just to keep things tidy um, and, and sort things out a bit neater for me. But let's say uh, Haley's heroes over here, let's dump them down. Here we go, they move in and they deal with that encounter. They choose to attack and kill the Sturges and help out the Kobolds and things. Um, we now need to award experience points. So what I can do is I can open each one of these and go, oh right, yeah, they're worth 25 XP each. And I can do that manually, um, you know, add that up, well that's going to be 200 XP. Now I need to divide it by the number of characters that are involved. Uh, of course you can. And then you can tell them what their XP is, and then they can open their character sheets and make their alterations, add their XP on, or we can do that as the DM. But with bigger encounters, that just starts to get a little bit um, time-consuming to be able to do that. What we can instead is once these are defeated, we can open our Sturges, and we can say, well, actually, we want to award these experience points. You can see just under experience points, we can award it. If I click on this, this is now saying, um, oh, it's not quite doing what I wanted. Why is it not? So, aha, this, see, I haven't used this before. I'm just having a little look at it. It is going to split these experience points, but it's only given me the option for, uh, for Randall, the human fighter. And there's a reason for that. I forgot to do one thing. Over here on the right-hand side, if I click on either of my parties, there is an option to set it as the primary party. So I've just done Haley's Heroes. Can you see there's a little blue uh, star next to it? And I can also do that instead and make the primary party Haley's Losers. So I must set a, um, a primary party for this. Now when I click on Awards, it is giving me the option of, uh, I can either split this reward, 200 experience points, or I can award it to each person or group. I want to split this. Um, it's picked up 200 experience points. It's picked up the 150 gold. And I have a couple of choices. I can either tick this box to give all of it. So it's going to split it between only one. So all of it. And give it to Haley's Losers team. Or I can say, well, actually, Sorry Man was there and Haley was there. I can split it between them two because, I don't know, maybe Nando missed this session or was in a library studying and wasn't part of this encounter. So I can split it between individual players if I want to. I'm going to split it only to Haley's losers to the group. Okay, so it's going to be all of the gold that they were carrying and all of their experience points. Let's click award. What we will notice is there's no gold in these Sturges anymore. It's taken their gold. So we close that. And if we open Haley's Losers, what we can see is suddenly we've got that 200 experience points here that belongs to this group, which happens to be the player party group. 
and clicking on their inventory, we can see they now have 150 gold. They didn't have that before. So it's transferred the gold and the experience points from the encounter over to the party. Now from here, I can click award, maybe at the end of the session, at the end of the chapter, whenever I want to do it. And now I can say I want to distribute that evenly between these people. Now, just before I do that, let's uh, let's call up one of our player characters that's going to get some of this. Um, let's have a look at Haley, uh, and we can see that currently this is showing up the top right here that Haley has no experience points um, at all. Okay, so she's got zero out of nine hundred, and if we go to uh, her inventory over here, we can see that she's got a total of seven gold. All right, so we'll leave that up there for the moment. We'll just grab this from behind, and let's award out this stuff to Haley's losers. So I'm going to split it between Haley, Nundro and Sorry Ma'am and I'm going to award. Now that I've done that, looking at the Haley losers, uh, Haley's losers group, we now have no experience points to distribute because we've done it and no gold to distribute. But on Haley's sheet, she's just gained 50 gold. So there was 150 gold. She already had seven. She's gained an extra 50. And of course, that 150 gold split between the three characters, 50 each. Obvious. Um, but also, we can see at the top here, she's now got 600. Uh, sorry, 600. She's now got 66 experience points that she didn't have before. So we can take the encounter and immediately split that XP between the characters involved or we can give it to the group. So whichever way you choose to do it. Now what I would personally be doing, the way that I like to run my games, is I would use that to um, apply that experience points to the group so that I know it's safe and secure. And then when they get back to the next logical place, it might be the next time they have a long rest, the next time they get back to town, uh, whichever's gonna work makes sense in my particular campaign my particular adventure I would then distribute and go right guys end of session right before we do that let me dish out those rewards and make sure everybody's got it uh, it just stops you having to do that admin part way through after every combat um, and it doesn't make sense for people to you know suddenly get enlightened and gain extra spell slots in the middle of an adventure I prefer to do that as part of a long rest somewhere where they are you know they're safe relatively safe anyway um so yeah really nice and easy way to do it those groups really do make a difference and make it so much easier to be able to uh, distribute wealth um, and treasures and items and things like that um, cuts down all the admin while you're going you can do it all at the end so if we take um <clears throat> if we take this encounter here we know each of these Sturges in here is worth a quarter of a CR. Okay, so if we change that down and just say there's only one of them, we know they're worth 25 experience points each. I may not decide to use the encounter for it, and not every creature is going to be in an encounter. I'm just I'm not going to do that. Um, but I can go straight into Haley's losers and say, oh look, you just killed that one on its own. I can just manually add 25 into the group for later if I want to. So I can do that. You know, uh, and maybe throughout the course of this adventure, they, they kill another four of those. There we go. They've now got 125 in the kitty, um, sitting there ready to be distributed at the most appropriate time, which I think is really good. It's just so much easier. Now, another way we could use this, if I open this group, I could change this uh, and maybe change it to Clifftop Encounter. So what I could do here is go, well, what are all of the things that they are likely to fight in here? Um, so in theory, they are well, going to fight this um, this blue dragon wormling. So let's find that and we can drag that in as well. That's worth 700 on its own. Uh, my, some of my images where I was doing, <laughs> doing the merges in the last video, it's lost some of my images. Don't worry about it. Um, we can easily bring those back. So that's, that's why I haven't got an image there at the moment. It's just something went slightly wrong. If you remember, there was a couple of little glitches because the add-on hasn't been updated in line with the new version 3 of the game engine. So it's just causing a couple of little... Um, very minor things. We have the issue with the shield, for example, was coming across as light armor instead of a shield. Uh, so I could add that in here and say, yeah, brilliant. Now, in the module, we know that um, 
if I come off of my character, we know that they will deal with this bronze dragon wormling. They're not intended to fight it. But we might say, well, hang on a minute. We know that they are probably going to um, have that encounter um, and be dealing with that. So I'm wondering how we can, because what we don't, we, I mean, I suppose what we could do is we could go up, drag in the bronze um, dragon over here. Um, I'm wondering if we can manually update that. Now, it's got space for formula, but I'm not exactly sure how to use that. But what I would like to be able to do is say, well, how do I somehow list in here? Because it's not telling me. Um, I can list individual gold. I can list individual equipment and stuff. But what would be nice if I could actually say, well, I want to edit that because my version of the Bronze Dragon Wormling isn't a CR2. Uh, maybe it's something else, or maybe they're not because they're not going to fight it. Maybe there's a 500 XP reward for dealing with that. So I could choose to let's see if I can let's see if this works actually. If I change that to 1400, so say so 1400, so that's this these Sturges plus my blue dragon wormling plus XP they might they should get for dealing with the bronze dragon appropriately so negotiating freeing it whatever it is that they're supposed to do so I could put that in there now what happens if they don't deal with the blue wormling so just this is testing purposes because I honestly don't know the answer for this if I take this blue dragon wormling out will they still get the 700 XP the 500 for the bronze dragon um uh, a chapter XP if you like rather than combat XP plus the Sturges so no it doesn't I've overwritten that that stays so you can manually type in whatever that is um, but you might want to award the adventuring XP rather than combat XP separately and not to do that um, there we go that's why we do these things that's why we test so um, I can make mistakes and look silly so you don't have to Okay, so what I would do then, what I probably would do, is actually stick all the combat stuff in here, um, as is. Uh, and then at the end, when they finished in this whole area, I already know what they've done. Let's say, you know, one of the Sturges, for whatever reason, uh, let's say the Kobolds killed two of the Sturges. Okay, so I'm going to drop that to six, because my player characters are not going to get the XP for things killed by other people so I might drop that to six and at the end of this whole thing I've got all of my XP in one place and I can award that appropriately of course because I've uh, messed with it yep okay oh that's interesting so uh, just by deleting out what I put it recalculated it so if you overwrite it it will stay with what you've overwritten if you delete what you've over overwritten it will recalculate it properly which is yeah that's nice good uh, so the whole of this scene I can award that and then I potentially can award the um, the chapter stuff. So let's say that's all the stuff they're actually going to fight. I can close my monsters, close my players. I can go back into Haley's losers. And I can manually, again, I could increase this if I wanted to. I can't... Uh, yeah, so what I could do is say, right, I'm going to award this. So all of this, I'm going to award it to Haley's losers for this. Brilliant, that's all gone, that's been awarded. Uh, and then I can award this and distribute this to the players. So that's the three. There we go, that's your experience. Oh yes, by the way, and also there's the 500 experience on top of what you got for combat for dealing with the bronze, uh, with the bronze wormling. So again, I can award that. So I could award that in two steps. Um, it's still an awful lot quicker than manually calculating everything for that. So I could just do all the encounter combat monsters, award all of that with all the appropriate treasure, and then I could just manually come in and go, oh, right, for the adventure experience, the completion of a chapter, whatever it is, type that in and uh, stick that straight out um, to them as well. So it's a really nice way to evenly distribute, especially if you've got a party of three, dividing everything by three is not quite as straightforward as dividing by two or dividing by five. Um, so just let it do it for you. So now if we look at each of these characters, or any of these characters, let's have another look at Haley. She was on 66. Um, I've now inadvertently catapulted her well on her way to third level here, um, because she's now at 557. And she's also magically got uh, a little bit uh, a little bit richer, although 
no, I don't think we uh, distributed more gold there, did we? Uh, but she's got a little bit richer there. Uh, and we can look at the other ones as well. So if I look at Sorry Man, again, his XP has gone up. I know we didn't check it beforehand. And he's got some extra gold. Um, we can look at Baldick, Baldrick. Um, and again, this one. So remember, Haley's Heroes, uh, Haley's Losers, he wasn't in there. He's not been awarded the XP. Uh, and he wasn't awarded the extra 50 gold. So it's only distributing it to those characters. So a bit of a short one, this one, but um, that's a really nice way to be able to distribute XP uh, and treasures and just be able to group them up. So I think I will definitely be doing that um, so that I can, you know, stress test it in the real world uh, and make sure that that is actually going to work for me. So uh, Dragon's Rest, there's only going to be sort of campaign XP. Um, Nothing from this one. Sea Grow Caves. Uh, what I'm probably going to put in is the Violet Fungi, which is hidden over here. Uh, these Sturges, I'll dump all those in together um, with these, uh, uh, what were they called? Uh, fume Drakes, not Smoke Drakes. Fume Drakes and the what is actually the Fire Snake over here as well. So I'm going to put all of those into one encounter. They're not supposed to fight the Myconods. Um, if they do, I can just... As you saw, I can just drag and drop. Well, actually, they're under NPCs. I can just drag and drop those in as well. Um, but as they are supposed to be peaceful creatures that they're supposed to be helping, it's up to you as a DM to decide whether you award XP for killing uh, neutral or friendly uh, foes. That's entirely up to you, the way you choose to run your game. I probably wouldn't uh, um, for this encounter uh, because I don't want to reward my players for just butchering everything that they meet and I want them to make sure that they're considering is this actually a foe that we should be fighting or are there other ways to solve our problems remember Stormwreck Isle is actually aimed at very new players so I would like them to go oh hang on a minute we're not getting rewarded for that uh, beyond any loot we might get uh, and actually have a bit of a think about why so uh, yeah, nice little uh, nice little update there for the um, version three engine. Really, really useful. Use it, don't use it, whatever you like. Um, I just think it's really, really handy, and it's not actually another add-on. Um, thank you for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.